If UDP is like dropping a letter in the mailbox and hoping for the best, then TCP is like requesting the return receipt from the post office. To provide this type of service, TCP uses a sophisticated system of sequence numbers, acknowledgments, flags, and timers, which UDP does not use, making TCP a more complex protocol. Let's first compare UDP and TCP. Like UDP, TCP provides a way of multiplexing data from different application layer protocols over a single IP interface. To do so, TCP adds a header to the data that includes a source and destination port number, just like UDP does. But the similarities stop there. UDP is a connectionless service, meaning that it can send a datagram at any moment without any prior notification or complicated set of procedures. TCP, though, is a connection-oriented service. With TCP, before two computers can exchange data, they must first agree to communicate and establish a connection. To form the TCP connection, the computers exchange messages in what is known as a three-way handshake. During this phase, the two computers agree on the parameters necessary to provide a reliable connection. While this connection is forming, no actual data is exchanged. Only TCP segments flow between the two devices. Let's look at a simple example. In this case, to load an HTTP web page, the PC must first initiate a TCP connection with the web server, specifying destination port 80, which is the standard port for HTTP, and source port 50123. The source port is a randomly generated number that is not in the well-known or assigned port number range we learned about earlier. The web server replies, specifying source port 80 and destination port 50123. And finally, the PC completes the handshake before sending data. Earlier we learned that UDP is an unreliable protocol because there are no guarantees of delivery. TCP, on the other hand, provides applications with a reliable data delivery service. TCP uses a sophisticated system of sequence numbers, acknowledgement numbers, and timers to ensure data arrives at the destination computer in the correct order without duplication. TCP uses a technique known as positive acknowledgement with retransmission, where the receiver of the data is responsible for telling the sender it received the data. We also saw that UDP interacts almost directly with IP, adding only port numbers and a simple checksum. UDP does not provide a way to chunk up or break data into smaller pieces to send across the network, relying instead on the application layer protocol in use. TCP, on the other hand, breaks a continuous stream of data into smaller chunks called segments for transmission across the network. Finally, with UDP, the sending computer transmits datagrams as fast as it can because no way exists for the receiving computer to tell the sending computer to slow down. TCP, on the other hand, provides a windowing system to regulate the flow of data between computers. With this system of flow control, the receiving computer can notify the sending computer when to speed up or slow down the transmission of data. A reliable connection, however, comes with a price. If we look at the TCP header added to each segment, you'll immediately notice that it includes 18 fields, significantly more information than the four fields added with the UDP header. The additional fields add extra overhead but provide the reliable service. Move your mouse over each field in the TCP header to learn more about its function. Click Continue when you are ready to move on. Next, we'll show how TCP uses these fields to guarantee data delivery. So what application layer protocols use TCP? The Hypertext Transfer Protocol, or HTTP, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, or SMTP, and the File Transfer Protocol, or FTP, are common examples. Click the links on screen if you'd like to learn more about these protocols, or click the Continue button to move on.